What's up, Lore Masters? Before we get started, I wanted to give a shout out to two awesome people. Gabe and Annabelle are some of the coolest kids on the block, or so the rumor goes. So this one's for you. With that out of the way, let's just get into it. Today we are going to be analyzing the morphogenic virus. Specifically, we'll focus on how Section 31 created it, how they infected Odo, and why the good detective survived so long before showing any symptoms. A lot of this is supposition, so like in any theory, you'll have to give me your thoughts on if it's valid or not. Before I get into it, I want to give a shout out to a couple of Reddit posts that constructed the idea in the first place. I found these exceptional theories interesting, so much so that I changed my entire video when I found them. I want to give specific props to Silverwolf874, whose post is very well nuanced and included in the description below. When looking at the morphogenic virus, it's important to remember Section 31's purpose in creating it. The virus is a response to the Founders' overall designs on the Federation and Alpha Quadrant. To emphasize, the specific target is the Founders of the Dominion, not necessarily all changelings. In fact, in DS9's Extreme Measures, we see Sloane apologize for Odo with even a hint of regret. He specifically states that he can't allow the cure to get to the Founders. The Founders. He didn't want Odo or anyone else to die, but just to eliminate the threat. Now, don't misunderstand, I don't think Sloan had any qualms about killing, but I do think he would have spared Odo if he felt that he could. In fact, something we'll touch on briefly later, but it's possible that Odo was never meant to succumb to the sickness, but simply was a carrier. In order to understand how Section 31 is able to create the virus, we can see tie-ins from several previous DS9 episodes where they may have actually have pulled something together. First, let's look at the Changeling's possible background. In DS9's The Search, we learn that Solids hunted and persecuted Changelings. This would cause the Changelings to form their own government, and thus the birth of the Dominion. This, of course, would most likely have resulted in some kind of Changeling Solid War. One that would have been probably very very brutal. What if there were still wounds from that war that the Federation encountered, but they never realized what they were looking at? In DS9's The Alternate, Starfleet finds a planet that they name LS6. On said planetoid, there's an obelisk. We see this exact same kind of obelisk on the Founders' planet in later episodes. What if LS6 was some form of colony of the Founders, or perhaps their original homeworld? We know they aren't against just up and leaving, as we'll see in other episodes. Additionally, on that planet, Odo experiences some form of gas that causes him to go insane and become something else. What if what we see on the planet was actually a part of the Changeling Solid War? Perhaps the colony was attacked by the Solids who utilize chemical warfare on them. This wouldn't be outside of the history of the Dominion's Willhouse, as we see the Founders utilize such means in DS9's The Quickening. The Founders infected a planet of Solids with the Blight to keep them in line. It'd be ironic if perhaps Solids had first started chemical warfare and the Dominion was simply better at it. So now with the gas we know will impact the Founders, let's look at the Changelings themselves. Further analysis shows that the species is also telepathic at some level, creating their own telepathic bond at times. This field allows them to shapeshift as well as join in the Great Link. Julian Bashir explains how it works in Deep Space Nine's Things Past. In that episode, he discusses how morphogenic enzymes create a telepathic bonding or link. While generally, this ability doesn't extend outside of an almost involuntary state, it is still there. Lastly, we also know that in order to prevent a changeling from being able to shapeshift into whatever it wants, you only need but create a quantum stasis field. In DS9's The Die is Cast, Garrick has a device that admits such a field. One thing to note here, as we watch Odo start to decay, is he looks exactly as he does with the virus, flaking and such. All of this brings us to Section 31 and the formation of the morphogenic virus. Let's tie it together. With the various different reports from DS9, what if Section 31 realized the link between all of these events? They returned to LS6 and found a way to conserve the bioweapon there. After doing so, they utilized their mole within the Romulan Star Empire, as of this time we know they have infiltrated the Tal Shiar, and are able to get a hold of one of the quantum stasis filled generators. Somehow they reverse engineer the technology into a bioweapon and find a way to use the gas to infect the cells of Odo. The infected cells would begin to morph and expand as the shapeshift continues to change into various forms. It works basically like cancer, it impacts the cells around it. It'll impact them one way or another, but the more the shapeshifter changes, the faster they're poisoned, and it happens from the inside. 
Every new form would mean more cells are again impacted and make it that much harder to shapeshift next. Ultimately, too many cells would be infected and changing form would be impossible. This would ultimately kill the founder. Additionally, as stated, those who were in the final form of the sickness look similar to Odo and can't change. The entire process from start to finish seems to perfectly tie everything together and even explains how Section 31 could have so deviously created something only having access to Odo and arguably the baby changeling we see in DS9's The Begotten. However, there is one plot hole that needs to be addressed. That is, how does Odo survive for so long and what occurred to Loss? A changeling we see in DS9's Chimera who may have been infected. For those who have seen DS9's extreme measures, we observe Bashir calculate that Odo was infected during the DS9 episode Paradise Lost. First, I would mention that this is a guess. Bashir never confirms it. It's, again, him making an educated opinion. But let's assume that it's true. There are a few theories here, with some being far more sad for Loss and others that lead to the conclusion that he's going to be okay. The first, and most saddening for the random changeling Odo met, is that the constable was meant to be a sort of typhoid Mary. That he was never supposed to succumb to the sickness, just carry it. Unfortunately, the amount of times that Odo decides to link with other changelings means that he ultimately will get the sickness as it evolves and his body stops being resistant to it. Another plausible and much happier outcome for Loss would be that the virus was engineered to only impact changelings specifically. This would mean that once Odo was turned into a human, he would be cured of the disease. This explains how Odo survived for so long in TNG's Children of Time and how Loss is not impacted as Odo had become a human before they melded. Odo would then become infected again when he links with the female changeling. Which should teach you something, kids. Don't let a woman share her lady juices with you unless you are sure where she's been. Love you first. Ultimately, Bashir is able to find the cure and it would be ironic. I'm not sure if Section 31 did it as some form of joke or that they thought the founders would never consider it or perhaps a combining of the two thoughts, but the ultimate cure is the basic building blocks of human DNA. A joke that would apparently work as the founders never even consider that the Dominion was fighting and wanting to eradicate their only cure. In the end, I think this is probably the most feasible explanation for how not only Section 31 was able to create the morphogenic virus, but how it was spread and why it didn't impact Odo initially. But all of these are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.